Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Genus Academy. So friends, in the previous video, we have learned about the liquid propellant engine. That is nothing but the Vikas engine, which is used in the second stage of the PSLV. That particular Vikas engine is able to produce a thrust of 725 to 750 kilonewton, which is very much on a higher side. Well, friends, uh, do you know the basic science behind the rocketry? Like uh, whenever a rocket moves upward in the sky, there is a uh, like a action and a reaction force occurs. Like uh, in this particular rocket, like let's say a simple rocket, like that we uh, used to play during the Diwali. Okay, this particular simple rocket consists of a gunpowder. So when we just ignite at the bottom, like it will produces the like a uh, combustion occurs and all the like. Uh, burning gases they are trying to come from a limited uh, nozzle so having a limited space so this particular combustion like hot burn gases they are coming out of a higher velocity so over here the action takes place and just because of this particular action there is a reaction in the upward direction that produces the thrust and the rocket will go into sky high so basically friends this is nothing but the action and the reaction that is nothing but the newton's third law every action has an equal and opposite reaction well, the science behind the rocketry, like we can see the traces of this into the history. Well, friends, uh, during this, uh, like uh, in the earlier days, during the 17th century, the Chinese, Chinese military, these, uh, these rockets were the main components of their armory. In those days, like this is the basic science behind the rocketry, like this is the beginning of the rocketry. And then the, in the later stages, the different, different types of the engine, such as the solid engine, liquid engine, and the hybrid engine gets developed into the rocket. And nowadays, by using this particular rocket, we are going into space. For astronomers uses this particular rockets for the space research to, uh, to put all the satellites into the desired orbit. Also, these particular rockets are using for the warheads, military applications. So that's all about the rocketry and the rockets. Well friends, there are three types of the rocket engine. In our previous video, we have seen the Vikas engine, that is the liquid kind of, uh, liquid type of the propellant. Now, in this particular video, we are going to learn about the solid engine. And in the next video, we will learn about the hybrid engine. Well, this particular solid engine, how does it work? Like, if you look at this PSLV, there is a strap-on boosters at the bottom. This particular strap-on boosters uses the solid engine. It produces the thrust of 720 to 750 kilonewton that is sufficient for the liftoff and after that the first stage in the PSLV that is a HTPB engine hydroxyl terminated butadiene so this particular HTPB engine is nothing but the solid engine consists of the stra solid engine basically and this particular engine produces the maximum thrust of 4800 kN which is very massive so like this particular solid engine, which is there in the strap-on boosters and the first stage of the PSLV, as we can see over here. So what is exactly the solid engine? So friends, in the Vikas engine, we have seen there is a fuel and the oxidizer. Like whenever the combustion takes place, we always need a oxidizer. Like in the jet engines, the oxidizing agent always requires. In the IC engine, the air intake that consists of the oxygen. So like oxygen is necessary for burning and for the combustion. So what exactly happens in the solid engine? So solid engine, like you can see over here, this is the construction of the solid engine. We can also call it as a monopropellant. So over here friends, this is nothing but the stack of all the solid uh, like particles that are fused, combines together. Like this is nothing but the like a composite mixture or else composite homogeneous mixture of different chemicals which is very much required for the burning and for the combustion. So friends, if you look at this particular construction, okay, this is like a hollow cylindrical cavity in the center and uh, outer periphery that consists of uh, this mixture, which is ready to burn. At the topmost side, there is a igniter that ignites produces the spark. In the Vikas engine, we does not require the igniter, but over here we need the igniter to start the combustion process so friends over here this composite homogeneous mixture is very much important it consists of a polymer binder with flakes which can be the ammonium nitrate ammonium perchlorate and potassium nitrate these so these are the polymeric binders it also consists of the energetic and explosive compounds such as the rdx and hmx rdx stands for the royal demolition explosive 
and HMX is the high melting explosive. So you must have heard about the RDX. That is, this is the pre, uh, the, this is the word that is frequently used by the terrorist, RDX. Also friends, there are some of the metallic additives such as the aluminum and beryllium. Apart from that, there is a most important component. These are nothing but the burn rate modifiers. So friends, this particular burn rate modifiers, these are the extremely important components. Like, let's say uh, a particular rocket needs to travel a certain amount of the distance, but this rocket works on a solid fuels. Like to calculate this certain amount of the distance and number of kilometers, like the rocket needs to have a sufficient fuel. It should reach their desired destination. So in order to reach that particular desired destination, this burn rate modifiers are very much essential. We able to control the rate of burning. We able to re control the rate of the combustion in this particular rocket engine so that the rocket will be able to reach the desired destination within a limit limited fuel. So this is nothing but the burn rate modifiers. So friends, that's all about this solid engine, which is used in most of the rockets in the first stage and the strap on boosters of the PSLV and the GSLV. So friends, over here, the ignition occurs and uh, like this burn gases, they are tried to escape from a limited cavity. Like at the bottom side, there is a nozzle. And as you can see in this particular cylindrical cavity, like this hot burn gases is having a higher velocity, higher temperature. They try to escape from this cavity. Over your friends, you can see this is how the ignition occurs into the layers basically. Okay, like uh, ignition started at the, this particular point and then gas moves from this particular point into a uh, longitudinal direction like over here like we can into this particular direction it will uh, move the like it produces the higher amount of the thrust and ultimately our rockets gets a lift so this is how this solid propulsion system works so friends let's compare between this solid engine and the liquid engine where over here the solid engine produces the higher amount of thrust as compared to the liquid engine solid engine is very much reliable like we can store this solid engine without any hazard like for a longer time period we can store whereas the liquid engine we cannot like there is a risk of uh, like hazard occurrence also this particular solid engines are very much cheap like and cost effective basically friends this particular solid fuel is a reliable fuel we can say that and this particular solid engine it is like suitable uh, for the low payload capacity satellites that is uh, for the like less than one ton i can say so it is uh, like uh, the satellites which needs to be placed in the polar orbit so for this reason like uh, we can go for the solid rockets solid engines basically but over your friends there is one of the biggest uh, disadvantage like this particular disadvantage like once the ignition gets started we cannot stop it or we cannot be able to throttle it just like in the vikas engine like if we want to increase the thrust like we need to increase the supply of the oxidizer so the thrust will get increased over here the throttling cannot be occurred in this solid engine so that is nothing but the biggest disadvantage of this solid engine also this particular solid engines is having a higher weight like all of this uh, uh, composite mixtures carries a more weight so that's why it is used in the first stage of the PSLV and in the strap on boosters because it is having the more weight now so this is the reason like uh, Vikas engine is always placed in the second stage of the PSLV so friends some of the so friends some of the examples of this uh, solid rockets are the Russia's proton series such as the proton M Europeans Arian 5 and US Atlas 5. These are some of the examples of the rockets that use as a solid kind of uh, propulsion system. So friends, that's all about the solid propulsion system which is used in the rocketry. So friends, I hope you enjoyed my video on the solid propulsion system which is used in the different kind of the rockets. So friends, uh, so friends, please share all of my videos to your friends family and social media. Thank you so much for watching this educational video. Please stay tuned with Engineers Academy.